Hello everybody and welcome back. We are here because I have the great opportunity to do a sort of joint thing here. We're gonna go back and forth with my friend Jorge Gaviria, who is just coming out with this spectacular book called Masa. And in this video, we are gonna go all the way from the kernels of dried corn all the way to making a tortilla, okay? If you really want to experience what Jorge has to offer, then you got to get this book. It is the best thing that's ever been written on corn masa. So Jorge is the founder of Masienda, the heirloom corn company that we get all of our corn from to make the tortillas that we use in our restaurants. Okay, so let's start with corn itself. I love this corn because it's got like a nice sort of richness to it. It is the flavor profile of like movie theater popcorn nice. butter. Okay. okay, and we've got a pot of water going <laughs> here. We're going to add the calcium hydroxide to it, what is called cow. This is the same stuff that they set mortar with that they um, use to make whitewash. So it's available, but I would suggest you get this food grade stuff, Stick right? to the food grade one, yeah. for sure. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Okay, what's our first step here? All right, so first things first, I'm gonna get uh, our calcium hydroxide into kind of a slurry. Mm -hmm. and pour it over here. The calcium hydroxide is critical to cooking with corn for nixtamol um, because nixtamalization is the process of taking an alkaline solution that we're creating here with the calcium hydroxide and having it soak after it's cooked uh, the corn, usually six to eight hours, um, to impart nutrition, flavor. Um, you know, in the old days before we had the ability to, to test for pathogens, it was actually a kill step for bacteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really critical sort of alchemy process that's gonna unlock this. So, I, uh, I'm making a slurry with our calcium hydroxide. If you want, you could always just sort of put this directly into the pot and mix it all together. This is just kind of a step that I like to do to make sure it's really evenly distributed. Uh -huh. And I'm going to pour it right over okay. our, uh, our corn here. The ideal ratio, it's a little, there's a little controversy about this, but the real ratio that it's going to work every single time is 1%. So 1% yeah. of the weight of corn, in this case, two pounds of corn, mm -hmm. we're going to have 32 ounces of cal. Okay. And this is definitely something that's best to measure. Uh, I know that the abuelas in Mexico don't measure. Um, no, but they know but exactly what it they is. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've got this now. I'm going to add this to our boiling water. Yeah. You can also, if you want to, bring the corn and the water to a boil okay. together. But we've got this going for for ease of uh, demonstrating Well, because you want to see this next yeah. step, that it will start to change color right Media. away. You'll start to notice that soon that water that goes from that kind of chalky white color will start to turn a bit yellow. That's actually the cartonoids of the corn leaching out into the water. So it's sort oh, of, it it's interacting okay. with the water. Okay, so you can see that this corn has turned this like deep dark, like I mean, mustard yellow. Kind of where uh, we started. Yeah, here. where we started. It's a little, a little hot on that griddle. Really, really changed color here. Okay. What's our next step with this? Thing? So you are really focusing on the cooking of this to make yes. sure you don't overcook your kernels. Because okay. if you overcook the kernels, you're not gonna have real structure to the tortilla that you're working with to exactly. finish. Exactly. So you wanna, people always ask, how much time? What's the temperature? I don't really worry about time, though generally, you know, it could be 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how dry the corn is, uh -huh. what kind of stove you're working with, all sure. these things. I really just look sort of for, for taste and feel. If you taste a kernel beforehand, it's a really helpful kind of reference point you know it's uh it's incredibly chalky and in fact yes just do it once so you know what you're starting with absolutely um and that chalkiness obviously it's a starch so it's going to start to develop and what you want is sort of this really perfect in between goldilocks state perfect. where it's yes it's slightly chalky a uh -huh. little bit of like undercookedness still there it's al dente really right uh, like you would a pasta exactly yeah. but al dente in the italian sense of al dente not what we Truly. call al Thank dente you. in the united states okay so, so we're going to say that this thing is cooked for 45 minutes or so exactly. So we've got a pot here that is already cooked and steeped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this has now been sitting. That whole alchemy process called nixtamalization has yes, happened. Yes. You've got the corn now richly imbued with some calcium from the calcium hydroxide. It's yeah. now activated mm -hmm. the niacin that's yeah. found, that amino acid that your body can now absorb. Basically, we've just turned this into a superfood. So we're gonna take this and rinse it. Maybe we should take a little bit out actually so okay. you can see. So you kind of rub your fingers together. You start to see some of that skin come yes. off, right? That's the pericarp. And that is really important in terms of kind of creating an elastic masa. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to completely wash that pericarp off because you're not going to have as elastic and kind of workable of a dough. So it does help. It's where all the gums of that, the, yes. the corn are. And if you don't wash it at all, 
then you're going to end up with this even gummier moss. Yeah. It's going to be more yellow in color and stronger in the color. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a 50% wash off. You just okay. kind of eyeball of, it. Yeah. Eyeball it 50% yeah. wash off. Okay. I'm going to you the do sack. That. What we have now can go in two different directions. Okay. It can go to make masa for making tortillas or for making tamales or any number of things, yeah. um, but also it could just be boiled like this and then it becomes hominy or what is called pozole corn, okay? And in the old days, they used to dry this stuff out mm -hmm. and then grind it into what we call uh, grits or hominy grits because this is the first step to making hominy. Yeah. Now, the next step we want to take is to grind it. And you guys at Masienda have created a we little have... version of a stone grinder, which yeah. is super exciting yeah. to me. The original grinding method for converting nixtamal into masa was a metate. This is a, a you know sort of replicating the metate, and what you get on the other side is a really beautiful masa espumosa, like you know, like yeah, a really yeah, so like a fluffy mm -hmm. textured masa. Yeah. Now, not everyone, understandably, can have a molino sure, like this. Sure. My my wife actually doesn't let me have one in our house because it takes <laughs> up too much space. So you know, there are other ways to get around it. We have a food processor method, which is not my favorite. I think if you're going to go the whole kernel to masa process, yeah. just use one of these, yeah. which is a, um, this is actually a company named Victoria. We carry this on Macienda's site, yeah. but you can also buy it on Amazon. Right. Um, and this is basically replicating that same uh, sort of stone experience, stone on stones, but you're using metal plates. You're using metal plates, yeah. yes. And my experience with that and the food processor method mm -hmm. is it gives you a little bit coarser yeah. textured masa, which is absolutely perfect mm -hmm. if you're gonna be making tamales. Exactly, um, and or frying yeah, as well. They're, yeah, but I haven't been super successful with that for making tortillas. Mm -hmm. But what we're gonna show you today is how it comes if you go to a tortilla. Yeah. So what's our first step to do that? So I'm going to take this corn that we've already, yes. it's now next to them all, um, transformed, and I'm going to put it into, kind of load it here in the hopper. So I'm going to kind of just make sure this is getting a good, kind of a good starting point here. All right, this is going to take about a minute. So uh, on the other side, we'll have masa and then we'll get our tortillas going. Okay. Okay, so our masa is looking good. I've been we feeling got, it throughout that yeah. whole process to make sure it's getting that kind of fine texture. It's not, you know. It's not too coarse. No, it's okay. just right. Good, good, good. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that this masa is sort of like nicely blended. And now we've got this masa, it feels really good to me. Some of it seems a yeah. little softer so than other parts. This is why mixing is such a crucial step. Yeah. Okay. You cannot overwork masa, yes. so don't worry <laughs> when you're doing this step. It's not right. gonna develop any gluten. Okay. So I think we're so feeling well, good. let's start with yeah. this. So you take a piece that's about the size, I say, of a walnut, and you put it between two pieces of plastic. Now, I'm gonna press it out, but I'm not putting my whole body weight down on it. I wanna get a, between a five and a six inch tortilla here. Um, usually, most presses are slightly off, so I give it a gentle press just after turning at 180 degrees, which will flatten it more evenly. And then I'm going to unmold this guy um, onto my hand and I'm going to lay it down this way, catching it and then rolling my hand out from underneath it on that side. Like now we're going to let it bake here until it's like a little bit dry on the outside there um, and it will release itself from the griddle. That takes about 30, 45 seconds for that to happen. Depending on how hot, yeah. So the next flip of it that we're gonna do now um, will be the flip that will go to hopefully giving us just a little bit of puff. Yeah, the puff is really the result of um, five key factors and you can kind of use these factors of these variables to measure kind of, um, I don't know, approaching a really vigorous puff, right? The first is uh, you wanna make sure your grind is very, very fine. Um, the second, you wanna make sure there's enough elasticity in the, in the actual masa. Um, moisture is a huge one. Um, real quick, Rick, I'm gonna put this finished tortilla in a, in a tortilla warmer here. What he's doing is one of the most important steps because they're not finished cooking until they have a chance to steam with other tortillas for a little while. And it's interesting. It starts out as a crusty tortilla, yes. you know, and in that steaming process, it becomes really, uh, you know, elastic and much more workable so it doesn't fall Absolutely. apart. Absolutely. 
So this is a very short amount of time on that side, Ooh, but, but that's we've nice already though. gotten a little bit of color on it, moving it now over into the hotter part. After another 30 seconds or so, we'll flip it and see if we can get even a better puff yeah. on this one. And for those, I don't know if we talk about what a puff really is. It's just the process of heat meeting, you know, moisture in the center of the in tortilla the and creating kind of an expanded sort of lift off. Right. I'm going to use the rag because it's okay. just for good luck here. It's hot there. It's hot there. Okay. There we there go. There we go. Now that little bit of compression makes such a difference. But there you've got it. Yeah. You have seen the making of tortilla all the way from dried corn kernels to an almost fully puffed tortilla here that we can be really <laughs> proud of. But the thing that you will find when you make your own tortillas, especially if you're using good quality masa, is that the flavor difference and the texture mm. difference is remarkable. The, it's not, nothing you've ever had before. Should we have one? Yeah, why not? That, that one, yes, let's have that yeah. one that's been over there. All right. And I will say, folks, it's the best thing that's ever been written on masa. I think you'll love it. Those of you that love traditional foods, you're going to love learning about masa because it's one of the most remarkable things known to man. What do you think? I think we did pretty well. <laughs> We did well. Mm -hmm. We did really well. But We're going to call this one a tostada now because it's <laughs> been on the fire for long enough to get mm -hmm. really crisp. But thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you.